what Judon says immediately upon getting traded to the Atlanta Falcons uh, certainly shines a light on what happened in New England. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Then it certainly shines a light on what's going on in New York with his own Reddick. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then it makes... You know, that Atlanta Falcons organization, if you're hearing about this dinner that was a recruiting dinner for Justin Simmons to sign down there, head coach, star players, GM down there, recruiting Justin Simmons to come down there, Judon just being like, nah, I just, I got to prove myself. It's like, what's, what's, what's going on in Atlanta? Do they got the magic sauce right now? And if they were in on the IU conversation, which they can't because the Kirk Cousins money and the money that they give, give in other places, but if they were in on the IU conversation, feels like Atlanta might have been able to get the deal done. They are hustling down there to get great. And Judon, obviously, a pillar piece for them, I think, probably going forward, even though he only has one year left on his contract, and he says he's going to have to prove to the people in the building that he's worthy of the next contract. What does that mean about what he thinks about New England? We'll talk about all throughout the day. One half of the hammer, done! Cowboys Tone Diggs back on the stage, fresh out of hammer, done! Done! Which you will certainly go back to every once in a while through the season. Great to see you up here. How are you doing, pal? Great to be here. I have... I'm doing lovely. You know, it's it's so beautiful in the morning now. Like it's nice. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. The Christmas in the air feels like football season. Football's here. We're saying football at the beginning of the show. It's great. Yeah, it is fantastic. Uh, I absolutely love it. And the stories around football still fun. You know, sure. Not necessarily. Is this team going to go in the Super Bowl? Or no, no, no. Is this team looking better than ever? Or is this team going to be able to get out of a drought? Or this team's third downs really not good. That's going to come back and bite them in the ass whenever football matters. Where we're at is just talking about stories that are seemingly going in a circle. Mm -hmm. That's right. A yeah. lot of circle storying going on. Okay? Tales. Maybe even two hands of circle storying yeah, going on. Circle bit. Yeah, look. Whoa. Hey, circle so, jerking around. I, I know what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. People are getting jerked around. Yeah, 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 yeah. All over the place. This Judon story, as a New England Patriot fan, Red Sleeves obviously no longer roaming the field for the Patriots. Ah. He was up there in the new era of Colts, still Belichick era, or sorry, of Patriots, still Belichick era of Patriots up there. He has the situation with Coach Mayo, you know, on the field whenever he was holding out or sitting out of padded practices. He and Coach Mayo talk. Mayo sends him off the field. He's back the next day. Then, boom, he's traded to the Atlanta Falcons. Mm. Holy hell, the Atlanta Falcons are trading for Judon. Do they have a deal done? They do not have a deal done. Wow. Falcons are idiots again. They pay a quarterback $180 million. Then they draft Michael Penix Jr. in the top 10. Who's your quarterback? You don't have one. What's your plan? You don't have one. Then they trade for Judon without a deal getting done. Are you guys just saw Reddick again? Hmm. What? Could be. What a bunch of doofuses. How many amateurs we got running NFL teams these days? We're all natural thoughts to have with the Atlanta Falcons after the Judon trade gets announced because it was a contract dispute. Then he gets traded to a team he's never done anything for. Mm -hmm. So he can definitely hold out from there, too, if he can hold out from New England. Instead, Judon gives an answer that says, nah, I'm willing to prove myself. Ooh. I want to prove myself. Yeah. The Atlanta Falcons don't know me as a football player. They know my history, so I can't demand something I haven't worked for. Say so he's just working to put his best foot forward at this point. Doesn't appear to be a sticking wow. point. And then you listen to what Bill Belichick told us yesterday about what happened with Judon last year whenever he had two years left on his contract. Bill Belichick said, I told Matthew Judon and his team, who I have a lot of respect for, that we're not doing anything unless you're practicing. Like, we can't just have somebody come here and then not practice and then pay a person. And you set a precedent when, you know, you have a 15-man band coming in your office. Yeah, yeah. With two years left on your deal, holding out, not getting things happen. You go to work, we'll figure out how to get a deal done. Now he's kind of taking the same mindset to Atlanta. Raheem Morris, obviously beloved by a lot of people, would have to be to get all these things done that is currently taking place down there. Terry Fontenot has a vision for the team. Kirk Cousins' birthday was yesterday. Yeah, hey, happy birthday, happy birthday, Kirk. Kirk. We'll, we'll check out his white boy playlist yeah. for his birthday that they had to practice down there. But the Judon stuff coming out, I think, is great news for the way I view the Atlanta Falcons. You know, not obviously Judon as well. But the Atlanta Falcons are handling this situation with another star, all pro, pillar guy that could potentially be, just like Hassan Reddick with the Jets. Could be all this stuff. But for one reason or another, Judon says, I still got to prove myself to these people. I've never been here. Hassan Reddick says, 
I'm getting the fuck out of here because you're not paying me, even though you've never seen me in a meeting before. Two vastly different outcomes. And shout out to the Falcons, I guess, for handling this much, 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 much better. And as a Patriots fan, what does this make you feel like? I mean, I feel like this was kind of the story with him before he got traded. Like, he, you know, he did sit out, but then he came back, and it felt as though, from his side at least, like he was going to play for the Patriots if they did keep him just because if he, you know, demanded the trade and got or was asked to leave or anything like that. He would have just been traded without coming back. So it seemed as though he was already in the mindset like, all right, I'll play this year under my current deal. Hopefully I get an extension either during the season or after, but then instead just got shipped out of town. I feel like the precedent thing that you just mentioned is kind of why the Patriots ended up moving on from him just because first year GM, first year head coach. Hey, if we start doing this with guys on their last year of their deal coming off a season where they played four games, what does that say to everybody else on this team like oh hey if I just do the Matthew Judon thing then I'll get paid here and and that isn't really something that you want whether it's two years left on your deal one year left on your deal but for the Falcons I mean this is perfect for them Uh, you know Judon is in a prove it type year not only because of his contract but because you know he missed 13 games last year I, for one, you know, still view the Falcons as the Jets of the NFC. Bill Belichick yesterday said, like, hey, these teams that have a lot of money out, not money in. And he referenced the Saints, who we talked about for the last three offseasons as doing salary cap gymnastics. Maybe even more. Yeah, yeah, possibly the last five. Since, you know, towards the end of the What they lost, like $170 million off their books somehow. Yeah, yeah. Like a four-day period. Yeah, Yeah. and then Taysom Hill got a four-year, $160 million contract with the last three three years voidable. Do you remember Travis Kelsey was on with us the day that deal yeah. happened? Yeah. And we go, Trav, uh, Taysom Hill just signed a four-year $160 million deal. And Trav goes, whoa. Well, that's news to me. What? What? Well, Excuse me. See, what? Uh, tight end player uh, just signed. Well, that had a quarterback option in it. If yeah. he was the starting quarterback, mm-hmm. he would be able to get that. And then there was voidable year, three, three voidable of- years on the <laughs> yeah. end of it. So it was like the biggest salary cap gymnastic and salary cap fugues. But yeah, you're right. For like five years, they've been dealing with it. Where are they now? We shall see. I think you said Atlanta as well. He didn't. He didn't bring up the Rams, who had kind of gone uh-huh. through there. Yeah. Uh, yes. Got a Super Bowl out of it. Right. At, sure. In their home stadium, which is certainly a roll of the dice. Had a draft pick this year for the first time forever. Forever, because remember, fuck them picks. Mm. But yep. like the kick the can down the road thing became the move. And whenever you saw the Rams have success with it, it was hard for us. Us, doofus, is not to be like, do that. Yeah. Bucks, too. With, with does, Brady. Yeah, bingo. And they win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Money doesn't matter. Salary cap doesn't matter. What yeah. are we even doing? Let's just. Everything's going up and to the right. Let's just continue to just feed it, kick it down the road. And then all of a sudden you see teams like, hey, okay, we got to deal with this now. Bang, bang, boom, boom, boom. Russell Wilson got paid before he even stepped foot on the field as a Denver Bronco. Mm -hmm. A lot of money. Mm -hmm. Now they're eating $83 million over there. So that's obviously a downfall of it. The Rams not having anything to build for the future if anybody retires. That is a downfall of it. The Bucs have had to deal with it post-Tom Brady, but they were going to have to deal with anything post-Tom Brady. I think Baker Mayfield is awesome, but they've been having to deal with it. The Saints had to – I mean, Sean Payton just on a Wednesday – says, you know what, I'm actually, yeah. and then new head coach comes in, he's the right guy, but we're at a deficit finance-wise, and we got to move on from basically legendary team that brought Super Bowl two Saints into new one, so that's a tough spot. It is interesting how everybody's past mistakes with different regimes have potentially carried into new ones, outlier, obviously, Rams.